Hi, this is the first video for Chapter 7 under Atmospheric Circulations. We're going to be talking about the scale of these circulations. And we are also going to be talking about some of the smallest uh, circulations at the beginning of that scale. So let's head into it. When we talk about the scale of atmospheric circulation, we can go all the way from your neighborhood to the entire global system that carried the smoke from the Australian fires all the way around the world. I'm sure you heard about that. So we talk about different degrees of the scale of motion. Your neighborhood might be a micro scale. Um, meso scale could be something around your um, region or county. Macro scale can be something around your state. Synoptic scale is generally uh, around your nation and you see the national weather maps. That's a synoptic scale. And then, of course, we have global and planetary scales. So let's give a little visual representation to it. Microscale neighborhood, it can either be as small as a smokestack. And what we're talking about are the thermal circulations in the smokestack. This is the beginning of what we're talking about today are eddies that form in the circular motions out in a smokestack or even along your road when you can't chase after a piece of paper because it keeps moving out of your way in a circular motion. But that's an eddy as well. Again, the mesoscale is for the city. The macro scale can be around your state. If you want to give it another way to do a, uh, a, a scale, you can talk about um, the, num the time that these range over. And for instance, those eddies of that paper that you just can't catch, that goes from seconds to minutes. But when we talk about planetary systems and moving smoke from Australia all the way around the world, that can take days or weeks. So we can look at time and we can also look at the total area that these scales take up, which I think you understand from micro around your neighborhood to the planets. When we talk about an eddy or a whirl of air, that isn't on a very micro level. It's when wind encounters a solid object. A whirl of air forms on the object's downside. Let's take a look at this again. As you're moving up a smokestack, that air is going to form eddies because of the um, structure that it's in. And we can also think about eddies in terms of mountains that form eddies as well. There's usually a structure blocking the airflow. And on the downside, you'll get some turbulent motion in there, some circular motion because of the disruption of the structural object. There are several different types of eddies. I should just, just showed you what is called a mountain wave eddy on the downside. There are also rotors that tend to build on the ups and down waves. So you've got a wave crest coming over this mountain and down. It'll come up again because, of course, it's looking for equilibrium. It'll come up again and down again. All this motion tends to take tends to tighten this circle into a rotor. Look at what we have here for a photo for you. There's a range of mountains, right? The air has come over the mountains. You can see it and it's going up again and it's spinning on the next round. This is a rotor cloud. This actually has a circular spin to this cloud. Pilots know to avoid these clouds like the plague because of their, there is so much uh, turbulent pressure in here that can drop a, an aircraft right through the center of the cloud and send it down a couple of hundred meters over the course of seconds. So rotor clouds tend to be the accumulation of disturbances formed by the crest that's trying to form an equilibrium after a disturbance. There's another type of rotor cloud that's really spectacular called a billow cloud. 
And this is actually forming waves in the sky that has to do with wind shear. Wind shear is taking those waves and differentiating them by speed. So in other words, we've all known about very fast Chinook winds coming off a mountain, coming off at a very high speed. Well, the winds that are closer to the mountain may be at a much slower speed. These winds could come right over the mountain and barrel down, bringing warm temperatures, while the winds below them might be quite slower. This difference in speed tends to form a wave because these very high speed winds actually produce lower pressure. Something called Bernoulli's uh, principle. We won't get into it too much, but know that high speed winds can create low pressure systems. These slower winds have a real buildup of energy and can nudge up with higher pressure and form a wave. That wave is the perfect setup for a wave cloud like you see here. And again, pilots know, avoid leads, leads like the plague. It is a storm coming in. There's a storm starting to form. So what I wanted to show to you are that eddies are generally in small areas, right over a mountainside. And they can form and very quickly, seconds to minutes. That's why pilots always have to be aware of them. And these are the first micro scale thermal circulations that we're going to look at. We're going to look at other thermal circulations in the next video. Thanks and take care.